not panic. My first time doing this. Wish me luck. Um, it was 1996, and my wife and I uh, took a great adventure into the real estate and bought a nice beach property or bay property down in uh, Fenwick Island, Delaware. It was a nice little trailer. It was previously occupied by a very old elderly man. We never got to meet him. Um, and the house, uh, well, he passed away. We come to find out that his name was Victor. And um, so whenever that you buy a place like this, you know, we wanted to really like uh, do it right. So we'd go down every weekend and to fix it up, um, do a lot of renovations. I'm a contractor, so we're going down with the kids and just, you know, putting everybody in the van and going down. And if you have something like this that's valuable, it's on our hearts, we love the beach, um, you tend to really focus on certain things. And when we would leave the house on a Sunday to head home, we wanted to make sure everything was locked up. You know, it's the precious jewel that we had and worked so hard for. And we'd go around and we would lock all the doors and windows and make sure all the, the lights were on and everything. And the time of year was about this time of year, August, October, uh, when we were running down there. But it never seemed to fail when we would pull up to the house on Friday night, we'd find a light on. And the light that was on was at the front door. We'd arrive in the evening and the lights would be out, it would be dark outside. And we had, we had four children and they were young then, so we were carrying kids and all this stuff up to the door. And I would just jokingly, in my brain the way it works, I said, thank you, Victor, because he gave me light enough to see to stick the key in the door and get in quickly. So that was kind of the standing joke. Um, during this time, for the next few years then, um, we had little projects that we would do down there, and uh, um, my wife actually uh, got to work uh, to help the pastor who married us. She cleaned his home, but he was elderly. And I tell you this just to kind of give you a little insight in the direction I'm going here. Um, but she got to, to stay with him overnight and make sure that he got his evening meal and um, his bathing and all that. And sometimes at night he would wake up. Well, near the end of his life, um, they say that uh, the people who passed before you come to visit. Now, his pastor was a, uh, a, a twin who lost his brother years before. And some of my wife would come back from, uh, from uh, the overnight there with him and uh, tell me, oh, his, his brother's name was Paul. And he would be upset. He would say, what is Paul doing here? Why is Paul here? And uh, so we kind of got a little creepy about that. But so I tell you that to tell you this. Um, her grand, my wife's grandmother, had never, she was in her 90s, had never left the state of Pennsylvania. And we thought, what a great opportunity it would be to take her to this beach and just let her enjoy the house. And uh, we, we chose to do that sometime in the future. And we set a date. Prior to that, I had gone down by myself during the winter. Now the winters in Delaware back in the 90s in this part of town were desolate. The street lights, the stoplights going down into Ocean City area, Fenwick Island, they would start in uh, November after Thanksgiving and they would just blink yellow until about Valentine's Day. Because uh, there was nobody there and it was dark. We were on the bay, no lights, very dark. But I chose to go down and do this project. And this one particular night, I was just getting kind of a creepy feeling about the whole thing. And I decided, I didn't want to sleep in the back of the house. I'm going to sleep up front with the TV on, and, you know, big strong macho man I am, curled up on the food time. Well, I kind of paid the price for that. And uh, I woke up in the middle of the night and I had this sense, you know, that sense you get when something is, somebody's looking at you, where you feel the closeness of a presence nearby you and I felt that and I can actually feel a sense of breathing happening like right here in my face and not to say that I was terrified to the point where I didn't want to move but I just chose not to and I went back to sleep and I just kind of thought well maybe Victor was in a bad mood so we end up taking her 
grandmother down to the beach and uh, it's daytime, you know, it's a beautiful day. And we pull up to the house and uh, we all start packing everything in. It's sunny out, you know, it's a beautiful day. We start bringing everything in. And her grandmother was all of four foot three Italian lady living on her own, you know, uh, 90, what, four years old and still living on her, cooking her own meals, all that. But she comes in and she says, I need to use the bathroom. And I said, down the hall, last door on the left when you go in. So she goes down there, a few minutes later she comes out, and she's wringing her hands like this. And she says to us, who's that back there? And I said, who's who? We just got in here, we haven't ventured on beyond the house. And she said, there's a gentleman back there. 